Hello everyone, this is Dave from Dave's Resend Things. We made it through our seven days, seven wreaths celebrating Easter week. So that's seven wreaths celebrating Easter, a lot of color, a lot of Easter bunnies, a lot of chocolates and Easter eggs. And I had such an amazing time talking with a lot of you in the comments. And one thing that was requested a lot was more. Dave, we want more Easter wreaths. We want more. We want more. We want more. <laughs> and I love that. But since I have moved on to another season and I don't have it very many Easter supplies left, what I decided to do was to throw together a compilation video using some of my past Easter wreaths and DIYs. I'm going to put it all together for you and then you can just watch the whole thing. Sit back, relax, and I'll show you how I put it all together. And my materials list for today, I have this foam wreath form. I have some yarn in a couple of different colors, glue gun, glue sticks. I have my scissors, embroidery thread, and the embroidery needles to go along with that. I have this tea towel that I wanna make a bunny out of. And I have some colorful twine or string. I have some green shiny ribbon that I'm also going to use as accents. And of course, I use twine to make the wreath. So that's everything that I'm going to be using today. Let's start with a little wreath 101. This is just a green repurposed old foam wreath ring. It's, I believe it's 9.4 inches or 24 centimeters. It's a hard foam. That's what I'm going to be using today. So to start off, I'm actually going to use a whole bunch of glue from my glue stick and I'm going to start kind of creating a little anchor for that twine so it doesn't move all around. So I throw some glue down on that wreath form, get a couple of strands in the glue as well, hold it in place, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start wrapping that around like crazy. <laughs> You've seen me, um, I mean, it, you may have seen me or may not. <laughs> if you've watched my previous videos, I've done this same technique with yarn as well. And every now and then I just throw a little bit more glue down, wrap it around a couple of times and get a couple of those strands in that pile of glue just to keep everything in place so it doesn't unravel. So again, I just keep rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. And honestly, when I first started, as always, I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna take me forever to do. And really it doesn't. I mean, I just had, I think it was some music in the background while I did this and I just kind of sang along, had my little crafting karaoke going on, if you will. <laughs> and then I just kept rolling and then here I am at the end and I'm just gonna throw a little bit more glue there. And that's going to be the anchor at the end. So again, I do the same thing. Just roll it around a couple of times, get that twine in the glue, and then go to the back and add a little bit more glue as well. Make sure that's all nice and dry. Checking out my work to see if I'm happy with it. And now the glue should be semi-dry, so I'm just going to cut off that little extra there. And we're done wrapping our wreath form. And for this particular wreath, I wanted to make some pom-poms to kind of resemble grass, sort of. So I did have two different size of pom-poms, and this is the yarn that I'm going to use. And this is another yarn, which is a little bit thinner, that I'm actually going to use to tie the pom-poms together. Now, for this, I did two sizes. One was three fingers and one was four fingers. Obviously, everybody's fingers are different, so my three fingers was about two and a half inches and my four fingers was about three inches. So that's kind of the sizing. I just kind of estimated. I didn't really measure anything. And then for this, I just wrap it around, wrap it around, and I believe anywhere between 50 and 60 wraps is what I did for each pom-pom. So I wanted them kind of a little bit full, but they didn't have to be, you know, perfect because they were going, one side of it was going up against the wreath, if that makes sense. <laughs> so here I am, I'm just taking the yarn off of my fingers, I'm laying it down in the center, and then I'm just going to do a double knot here, and I'm just going to pull that nice and tight. Now, I am not an expert in making pom-poms. You know, I think this was probably the third time I've ever made a pom-pom in my life. Um, this is how I do it. 
I know there's certain tools out there that you can use to make life easy. You can use a fork or anything else, a piece of cardboard. I just find using my fingers in this method to be the way that I like. So all I'm going to do now is you take those loops, slide your blade from the scissors in between, and just give it a good cut. And that's really all you have to do. So you've finished one side, then I do the other side as well. Just chop that up. Make sure all my loops are cut. Then I kind of give it a good shake to see how it looks. And I'm like, yeah, I'm happy with that. So just take my string here that I tied it all together with. And now I'm just going to trim off. Now for this, I'm not exactly 100% perfect. I don't need it to be 100% round because the back side of it is going to go up against the wreath. So I don't need it to be a complete sphere. A sphere pom-pom let's put it that way <laughs> so i'm just kind of chopping it up and i want it to resemble a little bit of grass so it's uneven etc etc so once i'm happy with that i just take that excess string that i tied it all together with and i just chop that off and there we go my little pom-poms are done now in the beginning <laughs> don't laugh at me don't come for me for this <laughs> i wanted to sew a tea towel bunny and here is the sewing disaster of easter 2021 by dave <laughs> i just had to show you not everything works out this was just a horrible mess and what i decided to do was use felt to create my bunny instead of the tea towel so obviously the tea towel did not work, nor did my lack of sewing skills. I really had to laugh at myself for that. Here I am, I'm just actually tracing out a bunny shape to use for my template. So instead of the um, tea towel, I'm going to use felt now. So I just created a little bunny. I folded the paper in half such that I have a nice even uh, template. And then once I'm happy with the size and the outline, I go ahead and I chop it up. Now, when I went to my felt stash, I only had one piece of white felt left. So <laughs> I knew I had to be very careful in my sewing um, when I did my felt bunny. So here's my template. It's all ready to go. I'm going to grab my one solitary piece of felt that I have left. I'm gonna fold it over and chop that in half. And believe it or not, my template fit absolutely perfectly. I, could, I couldn't ask for anything more perfect, to be honest. So <laughs> here I am tracing it out and getting my outline down on that felt. I'm gonna add pins to it because I don't want that felt to move all around and I don't want it to move all around when I'm sewing it as well. This time around, I wanted everything to go smoothly. So then I just chop out my template and that's really it. Of course, I'm still laughing in my head about that freaking uh, disaster there of my sewing. <laughs> I have to laugh at myself. So not everything goes according to plan when I'm making my reads. So here I am, I'm taking a kind of a lavender color embroidery thread with the embroidery needle and I am just sewing all around the edge of my felt bunny. I am not a tailor. Uh, I don't sew uh, very often at all. If any, I think I sew a button on a, a dress shirt every now and then, you know, maybe once a year or something like that. I don't know this technique that I'm using, what it's called, I should say. I think it's a quilting stitch. I could very well be wrong. Basically what it is is you put a stitch through then you put that same stitch through the loop that you create. Um, you can let me know in the comments below if you know what stitch this is. I'm, I apologize. I learned this in home economics class back in high school. And really, that's like, what, 30 years ago, I think. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's called the quilting stitch, but don't quote me on that. So here I am, I'm finished with my stitching. I'm gonna stuff it just a little bit. I wanted a little bit of three dimension to my bunny. And all I'm using is uh, ripped up pieces of cotton balls. And I'm gonna stuff those in there with my pencil and get them 
where I want them to go. Like I said, I'm not stuffing this to capacity, but if you want to stuff it to capacity, that's totally up to you as well. It's your project and your choice. I just use a little bit of stuffing to get just a little bit of a 3D effect on there. And once I'm done, I just continue on with that same sewing technique and I sew up the rest of my bunny such that that fluff doesn't pop out. And at the very end, I do a little knot to keep everything nice and secured. And I used just a little bit of thread. <laughs> And I'm done. How awesome is this little bunny? I love him. He's so cute. So, my twine is done. My twine wreath is done. My little rabbit is done. My pom-poms are done. Now my favorite part is putting it all together. So, I just decide where I want my little rabbit. And before I did, um, I started filming, I started playing around with the placement of the pom-poms. And I made, I think it was five of the large and five of the small ones in total. I didn't know how many I was going to use, how I was going to do it. So I figured less is more. Or more is... <laughs> oh, I just made myself laugh. More is better than less. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so here we go. I'm just placing everything on, holding it down, kind of taking a look at it, and fiddling around with my pom-poms. Kind of figuring out where I want to go, how much is too much, how little is too little, you know, so I want that perfect balance. So I'm just putting on the final touches here of those pom-poms and I'm happy with that. I think I had two or three of them left over. And here I'm kind of fiddling around. Do I want to add another one? What do I want to do? I'm going to put that other one right here and then now I have two left over. So I'm happy with that, and what I'm going to do to add a little bit of color and a little bit of spring slash Easter flair to this is I have these little small styrofoam glitter eggs, and I thought they were really cute. Um, I wish they had all of these, like a mixed bag of colors, let's put it that way. They had a lot of them, like one bag of purple, one bag of pink, one bag of yellow, one bag of blue. And it would be so awesome if they had one bag that had a mixed color variety in it. But I was happy with the pink because I bought these color, these ones, and the blue ones. So I was happy with that. And the color actually turned out really nice. I really enjoyed it. So I just keep adding on until I'm happy with it. And then once I'm all done, I clean up my workspace. And I also made this little garland. You'll see it in a couple of seconds. Out of the tea towel disaster. <laughs> And all I did was use that colorful string. You'll see it here. Cut those little uh, tea towel bits into triangles and attached it to the top of my wreath. So there we go. A little Easter wreath that you can carry on into the spring season as well. I really hope you enjoyed today's wreath. I had a lot of fun making it. And if you did, maybe hit that like button down below and leave me a comment. And a little wreath 101 to start. This is a 14 inch wire wreath frame with four rounds of wire going all the way around and little crossbars that split this wreath ring into six different sections. For today's bubble wreath, I'm gonna be using the two inside wires. You can kind of see close up here, those two wires right there. So that's a little wreath 101 for this project. Let's get to it. And here's my wire wreath frame three rolls of deco mesh, a measuring tool, and Chanel stems that I've cut in half already. So first I'm gonna start with the Chanel stem and I'm gonna pile the three deco mesh rolls on top of each other. And I'm gonna start by creating an anchor. So that's basically so the deco mesh doesn't move around. All I'm gonna do is squish up that deco mesh and apply it to that crossbar and the two inside wires. So everything in between those two Chanel stem pieces and then twist it around, that's gonna create an anchor and that's not gonna go anywhere. So for the bubble wreath method, I do eight inch bubbles. That's the way I do it. You can do a little more, a little less, depending on how you wanna do it. So you measure out the eight inches bring it to those two inside wires, grab that Chanel stem, and then feed it through the top and the bottom spaces, and then just flip it over 
and twist tie it into place. And there you go, that's your little bubble. So another one, just measure up the eight inches and then find those two inside wires again. Take that Chanel stem, pull it through, and then give it a really good twist. I usually twist about five or six times to make sure everything's in place. And you can push it together to see how it's turning out. And then of course, spread out those beautiful colors that we have. Today I have blue, white, and yellow for this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue that same procedure all the way around. Now, if you want a um, more in-depth and slower tutorial on how I do this, I do have a video that shows you how to do the multicolor bubble wreath like I'm doing right here. It's slower and I explain a little bit more in detail. I'll put the link in the top right hand corner there just so you can take a look at it. Here I'm just doing it fairly quickly. So if you want a more in-depth tutorial, definitely check out that link. And I do six bubbles per section and then at each crossbar I create another anchor. So it'll be six bubbles, I hit a crossbar, I create another anchor, and then I do my six bubbles again. So here I'm just almost finishing up the wreath. It's totally taking shape now. And of course right now I'm totally smiling because I love the color combination of this. The blue, yellow, and white are so eastery, so springy. They're just bright and fun and really you do have to smile when you look at it, right? <laughs> and here I am, I'm just cutting off the excess twist ties. And then for my final couple of uh, bubbles, I'm just spreading out those colors to make sure that everybody can see those colors. And really there's no method in uh, spreading out the colors. I just do it randomly because I want to see it random as well too. I don't have uh, a specific order that I want them to be in. And once I'm happy with that, I just flip it over cut off that excess and then feed that tail through and flip that wreath over. Just a little side note, I ended up using two rolls of each color, so that's six rolls in total. You can see the excess I had on the side there of how much I left or how much I had left over. But there you are, there's the base wreath that I'm going to be working with today. And of course it's Easter, so I have some Easter decor. And I also had an idea for this little wreath using this little guy right here. How adorable is this guy? And I also have some carrots. So let's get into decorating and get that on the way. My idea is to have a little sign that says free carrots. So I'm just taking this wooden frame sign that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm just using my cutting utensil to kind of help it along a little bit, getting that backing off. Um, I'm going to use the wood frame, I'm going to repaint it, and I'm also going to use that background as well. And you see here I'm just kind of taking off the excess with my knife, and I'm just basically taking all the stuff off that I don't want. <laughs> and it was actually ended up being a lot easier just ripping the paper off there. So that's all I'm doing, I'm just cleaning those up, and then I'm going to use those glitter stickers to make my sign as well but first I want to prime that frame. I do like the color of it but I was kind of thinking it might blend in too much with my wreath and the colors I chose so I'm gonna prime it first and then I'm gonna put a lavender color on there you'll see that in a little bit and now I'm gonna get to my sign so I'm just taking some poster board drawing out a little template going to cut that out and then I'm just going to put my letters on here freehand. So I love how these turned out. They're so glittery. They're, they're a little bit puffy as well. I had so much fun with them. I was just like, oh my god, these are perfect. And I'm not making sure they're perfect or anything. When, they're, when I'm laying them down, I'm just kind of freeforming it. I want it to be a little bit crazy. <laughs> so here's my lavender that I'm going to paint. My uh, priming coat is all dry. And I just like the idea of this color because I thought it would pop a little bit more against the blue, yellow, and white rather than that green color did. And when I put it all together, I was really happy with how it turned out. So here I am just doing the final touches on that. And then I'm just going to put that to the side, let that dry, 
And there you go, it's all dry. Now I'm gonna put together that free carrot sign with my glue gun. I'm gonna flip the top of that frame over and then attach the free carrot sign to that. Let that dry for a little bit. Then I'm gonna grab some Chanel stems, full length this time, and I'm gonna glue those to the back such that I can attach this to the wire frame. So I'm just taking my little tool, pressing it into the glue, and once that's in there, I put a little bit more on the top, let that all dry, and once it's dry, I can now place it on the frame. And I'm gonna be using the two inside wires again, so I just feed those Chanel stems through, I give it a little tie, not too tight, just in case I have to move it around, and then I just eyeball where I want it to go. And once I'm happy with that, I just tie it a little bit tighter and make sure it's all nice and secured. I just love how that lavender pops on those colors. I was so happy with that color choice. And there I am just snipping off the ends, and there you go. Now it's time to place my little bunny. If you saw my haul video uh, for the Dollarama, you'll see this guy in there. He is so soft, he's so cute. I just loved working with this little guy, and as soon as I saw him, I knew I had to have him in a wreath. Of course, <laughs> once I started putting the hot glue on him, I was like, oh no, buddy, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I felt so bad, but I just love how this turned out and how it's coming along. I wanted him kind of lounging around in a field full of carrots with the free carrot sign, kind of like he's got a full belly and he's got his leg up, lounging around just in a whole pile of carrots. That's kind of where I was going with this whole wreath. And you can see me, I'm just kind of figuring out where I want everything to go. And I totally wanted his arm around a couple of carrots as well. So you can see me gluing that in place. And I mean, I just had fun with it. That's the whole point of wreath making, right? Just have fun with it. And of course, it shows on your work. I had such a good time with this. Here I am just placing more carrots all around. I didn't have a plan of where I was gonna put the carrots. I just kind of put one down and put the other one down, put another one down. <laughs> and I just kept going and going and going. And of course, as I put more down, I just got more and more excited about it and I just had fun with it, really. That's the main thing that I did with this. And our final reveal, our little bunny is all full from his free carrots, surrounded by all of his little piles of carrots. Again, he is so soft and fuzzy. I just love this little guy, and I loved making this wreath, and I hope you liked this video and the wreath as well. <laughs> if you did, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and subscribe to my channel so you can be notified whenever I upload a new video. Today, I'm going to be making a spring tulip with all of these tulips that I got from Michaels. Now, there is a slew of these tulips and I love it. So colorful, so springy. So let's get started. This is a 15 inch styrofoam wreath frame that I'm using and I got this from Michaels as well. And I have my tulips here all laid out. And the idea that I had in my head was to start off with like a cream color, then work my way into the colors. I'm not taking the tulips off of the stems. I'm taking it all, or I'm attaching it all attached together. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend the stem into a little arch that follows the same arch as our little wreath frame there. And how I'm going to attach it is with this wire floral wire i was looking for the words <laughs> but there you go this is just black floral wire there is green floral wire out there there's silver floral wire it really doesn't matter what color you choose just you know use what you have on hand you're not going to see it anyways so it's just going to be on the back and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to start off with a simple wrap around and then i'm just going to basically twist tie my first little tulip bundle there onto the wreath frame. And once I get my good twist on, I'm just gonna pull down that tulip so it's nice and secure. And then with my left hand, I'm just gonna hold it down and I'm just gonna wrap it around a couple of times. I'm not gonna cut that floral wire. We're gonna keep the same floral wire going 
the whole time. <laughs> so you are just going to wrap this around until about halfway down your stem. And again, don't cut your floral wire. We're going to grab another bunch. This time I'm using another bunch of these cream colored tulips. I'm going to bend the stem just to follow that arc again. And I'm going to just hold it in place with my left hand once I place it there. <laughs> and again, I'm going to take that floral wire and I'm pulling a little bit, you know, tight. You don't want those flowers to go anywhere. And I'm just going to wrap that around until about halfway of the new floral pick that you just added. So that's going to be halfway down to that new floral pick. And then I'm just going to repeat that pattern over and over again. Here is a white, green, and kind of a cream color one that I'm adding as well. And I'm doing the same process over and over again. So with my left hand, I'm securing it. With my right hand, I am wrapping that floral wire around. So again, don't forget when you're wrapping it around, wrap it until at least midway through the new floral pick that you put on there. You want everything to be kind of nice and secure. And now moving into the blues, wrapping it around. For this wreath, I used two bundles for each color. Now, I just so happened when I was at Michael's, um, these little bundles. So I'm in Canada. And I know the States was a little bit cheaper. I think in the States, at one point, they were $2.99 each. Now, up here in Canada, they ended up being, I think it was $3.49 each. So that wasn't too, too bad. Here you can see I'm kind of having trouble with my wire. It got caught. It happens. <laughs> I just tied it together. And, you know, just to show you guys, nothing really is 100% perfect sometimes on my channel. <laughs> Things do go wrong sometimes. <laughs> but here, I just fixed the problem. I tied it off and I started to do this again. So here I am. I'm just moving down with my colors. And I just had them all laying on my right-hand side. Two of each bundle for those color, for each color, I should say. And really, you can pick any single color that you want. You don't have to do a rainbow style. You can make it all red, all white, whatever you want. Here I'm starting to get towards the end. So what I'm doing is with the stem of the last two floral picks, I'm trying to push them into underneath the wire that I used for the white. So those are the starting ones that I used. And then I'm going to wrap around that wire like I always do and I'm not going to wrap around the flowers just the stems so this part right at the end takes a little bit of while takes a little while longer because I don't want to wrap up everything so again I'm doing my last floral pick here and I'm going to just kind of squeeze that in between the styrofoam wreath and the wire that I did for the first bundle and that'll secure that in there as well. And then once I get that in place and I'm happy with my placement, I'm going to carefully wrap that floral wire around my last floral pick just to make sure that's all nice and secure. So all in all, I did, how many colors did I do? I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did two colors or two bundles of tulips for each. So that's 18 in total. Once I'm done wrapping it around, I'm just going to cut off the excess and I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times, making sure I don't have those flowers underneath. And then I'm just going to feed it through some previous wraps and then I'm just going to tie it off and then chop off the excess. So again, it was a total for this 15 inch wreath. Now mine are very tight together. So there's hardly any greenery showing. It's 18 in total. So that's 18 tulip bundles in total that I did. And once I'm finished securing everything, I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time kind of fluffing it up and arranging it, making sure you know everything fits the way that I want it to fit. And here you go. Here is the final wreath all set, all colorful, ready for spring. And of course, 
nothing screams spring like a tulip wreath. What do you guys think about this? I have wanted to make this wreath for so long, and I'm so happy I finally did. I cannot wait to put it on my front door looking like this. Look at that. It's colorful. It's springy. It really just makes you smile. And of course, I made this wreath during winter, and it was freezing cold outside, and you can kind of see in the door there was snow still on the ground. <laughs> but I totally can't wait to have this hanging full-time on my front door. The materials I'm going to be using today is 21-inch poly mesh deco mesh, and I have it in this white and pink and this natural burlap. So they're both 21 inches. I have pipe cleaners, and I am going to be using an 18-inch wire wreath frame today, and that is from the dollar store. Again, you'll need some, you know, scissors, cutting tool, glue gun, and a ruler as well. I'm using my mat and a rotary cutter, but you can use a ruler and um, scissors. That is totally fine if you don't have the rotary cutter. And what I'm going to be doing is cutting everything in 10-inch strips. So this is 21-inch deco mesh. And all you're seeing me do right here is just starting off with a straight line. And then I'm going to cut it at the 10 inch mark. So you see, I'm laying it down at, you know, the 10 inch mark and going to 20. So all my pieces are going to be 10 inches wide by 21 inches in length. And all together, um, we are going to need 36 inch pieces that are 10 inches in length. So today I am using a natural burlap and a white deco mesh. You can use any color that you choose. That is totally fine. So like I said, all together, I have 36 pieces of, in total. So I have white and the burlap. So all together, 36 pieces. We're going to create 18 stems, two pieces per stem. So that's going to be the 36. So here is our 18 inch frame. And they have four rounds of wire going all the way through. But today we're going to be using the outside wire and the inside wire. And those are the only two wires we're going to be using today. And to start, I'm going to be creating a working wreath form. And what I want to do is I want to have eight stems in the middle, or sorry, eight stems in the inside round and 10 stems on the outside round. So what I'm doing with the string is I'm just getting the diameter of that circle and then cutting it. I'm going to measure that length. And of course, whatever that length is, I'm going to divide it by the number of stems. So for example, let's say this is 30 inches long. I want eight stems. So I need 30 divided by eight. That is the length that I'm going to cut. And this is actually going to be my guide for my spacer. So here I am, I am just measuring it out to about four and a half. I'm going to cut that, and each of my stems is going to be four and a half inches. Now, of course, if you had a, uh, what do they call it, for sewing, it's like that fabric measuring tape. All I had was the stiff kind or the rulers, and that doesn't work on a bend. <laughs> so this is what I came up with. So here I'm starting right at a cross wire. I'm going to take my pipe cleaner, feed it through. I did put a little dab of glue down there just to make sure that stem doesn't go anywhere and that it's nice and secured. I'm going to give it a couple of twists, and then now I have my first stem. Now with my little handy-dandy tool that I created, I'm going to space out that four and a half inches, put a dab of glue down, and then here we go, folding my pipe cleaner in half, giving it a couple of good twists, making sure it's all glued there. And I'm going to follow that same procedure all the way around on that inside wire, creating a total of eight stems on that inside wire. Now that I'm finished the inside, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the outside, measure all the way around to get the diameter. And then my first one is going to go in between the first two that I did on the inside, use my tool to measure and then dab some glue, and then feed that pipe cleaner through, and I'm going to do a total of 10 on the outside. 
And once I'm done, I have my working wreath all ready. And again, I have 10 on the outside and 8 on the inside. So that makes a total of 18. That's where I got the 36 pieces of mesh or burlap or whatever you're going to be using for this. We have 18 stems in total. It takes two pieces for each stem. That's a total of 36 pieces. And all you're going to do for this method is roll up your mesh. I'm going to come in six inches on each side, give it a little pinch. Then I'm going to fold it and that's going to create a little loop in the center. And then once you fold it, and I'm going to unravel it a little bit, there you go. So once you unfold it, or once you fold it, so you're going to have a loop at one end and two little curls at the other. And then just take a little chip clip or a paper clip or something, keep that together off to the side. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with our second piece. Now for me, I am going to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to be doing a combination of the natural burlap with the white deco mesh for the outside. So those outside 10, I'm actually just going to do that combination. And then for the inside eight, I'm going to be doing just the deco mesh. So here we have our two ribbons. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to invert one ribbon on top of the other, which means basically we're going to turn it around. <laughs> so here they are face up. Now we're going to turn it around such that each end, or I should say each bundle on each end has one loop and two curly cues. And once you've got that all organized, all we're going to do is stick it right in between those two stems and then give it a couple of good twists. And one thing to uh, remember about pipe cleaners, you can twist them too much where they do come apart or they do break. So when you twist them, give them a couple of good twists, but don't sit there and twist them for 10, 12 times because that, that pipe cleaner will eventually break. Again, we're just going to roll it up, come in six inches on each side, flip it over. There's our ribbon look. And then we're going to do the same thing for the burlap. And this method has a couple of different names. I mean, it's it could be called the double ribbon, the double loop. Um, I call it the ribbon loop method. I don't know if that's right. I mean, there's so many different names for all of these methods that we do in the wreathing community. So... Yes, this is also known as the double ribbon, double loop, and the ribbon loop. So here I am. I'm going to be doing two deco mesh pieces. So my first one, I create my ribbon loop. Get that attached there. And then the second one, I do the same thing. Roll it up. Come in six inches on each end. Oh, I didn't like the roll there, so I'm going to roll it a little bit tighter. <laughs> Come in six inches on each end. Flip it over, creating that loop, and then invert such that there is one loop and two tails on each side. And this is what it looks like with two pieces of mesh. Now, for my wreath, I'm going to put this one right in the center. Because, again, I am doing the uh, burlap and deco mesh combo on the outside, and the inside is just going to be the white. So we're just going to continue on creating my loops going back and forth from the burlap and deco mesh combo to just the two deco mesh all the way around my wreath until I'm finished filling everything in. Here we go, I am almost done. I'm putting on my last one. And then what I'm gonna do once this last one is on there is I'm just gonna fluff it up a little bit. I haven't really done any fluffing. So I just want to make sure everything's covered. There's no wire showing through the back. And what I also do with the stems for this particular wreath, I'm not going to put any ribbon on there. So I'm just going to cut it off. And one thing I do is I add a little bit of hot glue right on the end such that those stems don't come apart. So I'm going to finish fluffing it up and chopping those stems off that I'm not going to need. And here we go. We have our loops. We have our little curls. And I have my little burlap accents on the outside. And that is your ribbon loop base wreath all ready for your decorations.
How cute does this look? I love how full it is. I love the loops. I love the curls put together. Oh, I just love how this is. And of course, you can use any combination of color, any color you want. Today, I just use white and burlap. Here we go. So I have these dollar store carrots. There was a couple of sizes of them. This dollar store sign. There's a triple pail. And of course, our ribbon loop wreath that we did last week. Now, just a quick recap. I'm not going to go into a uh, huge detail making the wreath, the base wreath for this. So I'm going to link uh, the video in the top right hand corner here. And that'll go through a really in-depth step-by-step process of how to make it. So really, I'm taking 21-inch mesh, cut at 10 inches. I've created my working wreath there on the left-hand side. And what I'm doing is I'm rolling it up. And then on six inches on each side, I come in and then create a loop in the center. And what that'll do, it'll give you that ribbon shape. So on one end, you'll have a loop. And on the other end, you'll have two curly tails. And then what I do is I just put a little chip clip in it or whatever and put it off to the side. And for this particular wreath, I'm using a burlap and mesh combo. So I do the exact same procedure. I roll it up, come in six inches on each end, flip it in. That's going to create a loop on one end and two tails on the other. For this wreath, I only do the burlap and mesh combo on the outside stems. And the inside stems, I use just mesh. So what you're going to do is you have one loop facing one way, and then you take your second piece, invert it. So here it is, same way, turn it around, such that on each end, you have a loop and two curls. And then all you do is you put that right into your stem and you work your way around the entire wreath. Nice and easy, actually. <laughs> and this creates wonderful little loops and wonderful little curls in your wreath. So you get a combination of both. Of course, with this, you can use any style of deco mesh, any color that you want. Here I'm doing, again, like I said, I'm doing the white deco mesh with the burlap on the outside. And here I'm just going to quickly show you how I do the two white deco mesh together and what they look like. So I'm creating my first ribbon loop. I grab my second one. I invert it, put them together on top of each other. And then I'm just going to put that into the stem. And this one is going to go on the inside. So again, if you want an in-depth, um, detailed video of how I do this ribbon loop method, I'll throw that link in the top right-hand corner and in the description box down below. And here it is, all filled in with our loops and our curls. I have the white deco mesh with the burlap all around on the outside. And yes, that was intentional. <laughs> That was the look that I was going for. <laughs> so here we go. To start this off, I found this sign. It says, Every Bunny Welcome. And I loved it. I just wanted it separated. So what I did, simply just got my scissors and started cutting those little um, ropes on the backside. And then all I'm going to do is attach these signs to my wreath. But first, I need an attachment, so I'm going to lay down some glue, and then I'm going to grab a pipe cleaner, stick it in there, grab my tool, push it in, make sure it's all coated, and then I'm going to put a little more glue right on top to make sure that doesn't go anywhere. And I'm going to do that for all three of these signs. Now, if you want to make your life simpler, you can totally keep the sign attached and just stick it on there if you want, but I decided to take them apart. And I'm also going to use one of these pails that I had in this cute little set. It comes with a little tray. I thought it was the cutest thing. <laughs> and here's the string that came with the sign. So I'm just going to add a little handle onto our pail. I want to make it into a pail. So a pail has a handle. So I just attach that on there. Just using some hot glue. Then I'm just going to estimate and cut off a little piece and make that first handle. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side and create another little handle. 
How cute is that? Then on the inside, I'm going to throw down some, well, not throw down, I'm going to place, <laughs> I'm going to place some hot glue on the inside of that pail, and then I'm just going to stick a spare piece of burlap in there, cut off some of the excess, and there you go. My pail is all ready to go. The glue on my signs are totally dry, and now I'm just doing placement here. I'm just kind of seeing where I want everything to go. And my biggest advice to everybody is, and if you watch my channel for a while, I've said this almost every time I make a wreath, when you're placing stuff, don't glue it down. <laughs> Unless you know 100% where you want it to go. But just place it down without gluing it, and then you can move it around and see what it looks like. And here I'm just attaching my sign, bringing those pipe cleaners to the back, and twisting around the wire frame. So now I've got my sign in there. It is time to place that handy dandy cute little bucket that I just made. And I do have an idea for this wreath. And I'm trying to just place it in such a way that you can see it, that it's in there. You know, just kind of where I want it to go, let's put it that way. <laughs> I was at a loss for words there for a second. So all I'm going to do is just put a whole bunch of glue down and push that pail kind of like it's tipping over because that's the effect that I want into that deco mesh. And then of course I have my large carrots and my medium sized carrots or maybe, you know, medium sized and small carrots. I don't know. <laughs> and all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to glue these down. Sorry for the camera shakes. I was standing up while doing this and I kept hitting the camera with my head. <laughs> The trials and tribulations of crafting. <laughs> so again, I am just gluing these down very randomly. Um, I think I went through four packages, three or four packages of each of the sizes. So of the medium size and of the small, I did four packages of each. My whole idea was to have a whole bunch of carrots, you know, the more dense carrots at the top because it's kind of coming out of the pail and more spacing between the carrots towards the bottom. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I'm trying to make it look realistic where, you know, the carrots are spilling out of the pail there. And I just love how the carrots look against that white deco mesh. They really, really pop. And they also have like a little bit of a gold glitter to them. You can kind of see them. They have that little shimmer. And I just love that effect on them. I think it looks great. So now I think I'm all done. I'm going to hang it up and see what it looks like and stand a little bit of a distance away just to kind of make sure everything works out. And I do love how this turned out with my little every bunny sign welcome, all the carrots there. And here it is in all its glory. I just love how cute, how vibrant and bright this wreath turned out for Easter. And I hope you did too. Nothing says Easter like the Easter Bunny. Today, we're going to take a look at making a rustic Easter Bunny wreath inspired by those Easter Bunny wreaths you see all over the internet. To begin, I am just going to be using two different sizes of styrofoam wreath forms. And the sizing for mine is about nine and a half inches and about six and a quarter inches. So those are the size of wreath forms that I'm going to use today. And I am just going to start with some jute rope here. And this I just got at my local dollar store. Not too expensive. I think it was like a dollar for this whole roll here. And I am just going to start as soon as I find the end. And really simple for this one. All I'm going to do to start off is I'm just going to put down a little bit of hot glue at the end here. Then I am just going to attach that jute rope, hold it down for a little bit, just to make sure that glue dries. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start wrapping that jute rope all the way around. I'm not going to pull it too, too tight. I'm just going to make sure it's nice and taut and pushed up right against the one I just did before. So I'm wrapping it around with my right hand and with my left hand, I'm just holding it in place and I'm just going to go around 
the entire wreath. And here we coming up to the end. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave a little bit of the styrofoam bare and I'm gonna attach my second round, the smaller round, right on top there. And I want to attach styrofoam to styrofoam and you'll see how I'm going to cover up that styrofoam in just a little bit. So here I am coming towards the end. I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue down to make sure that my twine doesn't go anywhere and it's nice and secure on that styrofoam wreath ring. Give it a little bit to dry and then I'm just gonna take my scissors, cut off the excess and we are finished with our base of our bunny. And like I was just mentioning, I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna actually glue that towards the end of them together but first I want to wrap this smaller one so I'm just going to put this one aside and I'm just going to take a smaller twine and I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on the larger wreath I'm just going to start off hot gluing my piece of twine down letting it sit for a couple of seconds to make sure it's dry and then the fun part Wrapping it around and around and around. <laughs> and we are coming to the end of wrapping our wreath with twine. And again, I'm just gonna put a little hot glue down there to finish this off and to anchor everything, make sure everything's secure. I'm gonna wrap that twine in the hot glue Wait a little bit for it to dry. And then once it's nice and secured, I'm gonna grab those scissors again and just cut that off. And we have our second piece all done, ready to attach to the top, or to the bottom, sorry, <laughs> of our bunny. And here is the bottom portion. And I have roughly the same width here of styrofoam showing but what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that the top portion does adhere to the bottom portion and lay flat so I'm going to lay it both of them down on a flat surface line them up and then I am just going to hold them together for a little bit with all that hot glue in there and just wait until that dries the glue is now dry and I'm just going to take some remaining twine here and I'm actually going to wrap all around right in the center here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it over and I'm going to start a piece of twine right here. So like I did before for both of these, I'm just going to start off with my twine in some hot glue, holding it there for a little bit, letting it dry. And then I'm just going to feed through here and get those two sections wrapped together. And you can see when I flip it over, we are covering that opening of the styrofoam where we're not seeing it anymore. And I'm just going to give it some more wraps just to make sure everything's covered. And then I'll move on to the other side and just keep wrapping the twine around and around until everything is covered. I think this is gonna be my last one coming around because I've covered up all that white beautifully. I'm just gonna turn it over and then some more hot glue down. And we've done this a couple times before already. We'll just hold that in the hot glue for a little bit until it dries. And then I'm just gonna chop off the excess with my scissors. I'm gonna make sure that that rope doesn't go anywhere and it's nice and snug there in that hot glue. <laughs> but we turn it over 
And there we go. We can already see our Easter Bunny forming with the head and the body. Of course, an Easter Bunny is not complete without its little Easter ears. So what I'm gonna do is, this is a little bit thicker than um, some of the floral wire I've worked with in the past. It's just floral wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of judge the size of the bunny ears that I want. And I'm just gonna mold them with this wire. And I think that length is going to work. And again, I'm just judging here. I'm not, uh, I'm not measuring anything. If anybody wants to know the length of this, let me just grab my ruler. That is approximately about 16 inches, maybe just a little bit over of length for that. And of course, I'm gonna cut two lengths. And for this, I'm just gonna hold it side by side. Use my wire cutters, chop that off. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna find my center, fold it down. I'm gonna create a nice little point there. And then the Easter Bunny's ears kind of come out a little bit and down. So there's my little bunny ears. And all I'm gonna do is stick that right inside the styrofoam. So I've created a bunny ear so far. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other one on the other side. My wires are all in, shaped like bunny ears. And now I'm just gonna go back to that thicker jute rope that I had. I used this right at the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a bead of glue all on the top of this. And then I'm just gonna place down on top of that wire my jute rope. And that's gonna create those beautiful bunny ears. I've got my first layer of twine down, and just to clean up some of these edges here, I am just gonna use that thinner twine and gonna wrap it around, not fully, but just kind of haphazardly, very rustically <laughs> around the ears, just to kind of cover up a little bit of the wire and to cover up my edges here. My first ear is done. I've just kind of cleaned up those edges, wrapped around the twine, just kind of haphazardly and created a nice little pattern there on my first ear. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for the second one. And then let's move on to embellishments. And the base of my Easter bunny wreath is all done. I've got the base portion of it or his body, the face portion and his little ears also and we're ready to add some embellishments here. I'm just gonna keep him sideways so we can see our little Easter bunny in view. And what I'm gonna be adding on is just these little florals that I got from the dollar store. They're green and pink and I thought, you know, they're perfect for Easter. But what I'm gonna do is I don't like the little leaf here. So I'm just gonna take my wire cutters and I'm just gonna take that leaf off and I'm gonna turn this guy around a little bit and then I'm going to bend the bottom portion just to kind of match the, the arc of the wreath form. And all I'm gonna do is really simple. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue down and then I'm just gonna hold that right in place. And while I do that, I'm just gonna bend these little guys around a little bit, kind of place them where I want them to be placed. And then I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on a couple of other little floral picks.
My floral picks are all attached and nice and dry. And I'll turn this to the side so you can totally see it in its full length. It looks really good. What I'm thinking is I might just add a little bit more. I have this spare little carrot that I had in my little crafting drawer. So I'm kind of thinking I might add that maybe with some eggs on there as well. So I'm just gonna hot glue this guy down, attach that to my wreath. Of course, we always think bunny rabbits and carrots go hand in hand, right? So let's add a little carrot, why not? <laughs> Also too, I had some little eggs. So I think I'm just gonna put a couple of these eggs on there as well. It is Easter after all. So I'm just gonna take a couple of those eggs and I'm just gonna put them down and they're nice and co colorful as well. And I'll just put those down as well. My little Easter bunny rustic wreath is all complete. I have my Easter embellishments down here with my floral picks, and of course the little body with the little head and the little ears. I just love how this rustic wreath really turned out. And again, it's been inspired by those grapevine bunny wreaths that we've seen all around. So I've created another little rustic wreath using twine and all other supplies from my local dollar store. Now let's hang this up and see what it looks like on my exterior door. And here's my little rustic Easter bunny door hanger in all of its glory hanging right there on my front door. And it didn't cost me $80 like the ones I showed right at the beginning of the video. <laughs> I love that. And I hope you enjoyed today's video as well and my little Easter bunny door hanger. I had purchased these dozen white eggs. Now these are the dyeable eggs that I just purchased at the Dollarama. In total, I picked up four dozen of them. They come in a package, they're clear white, there's no lines on them like the plastic ones, so I thought they would be perfect for painting and using for this wreath. I also have a 14 inch wire wreath frame, and this I got at the Dollar Tree. So this one I purchased at the Dollar Tree. Really simple, really easy. Nothing uh, to tie on here or anything. All I'm gonna do is wrap some burlap around the entire wreath frame. You don't have to use burlap if you don't want to. You can use like a loose rag that you have around, cut that up and wrap it around, ribbon, anything really. All you need to do is just create a little bit of a larger surface for you to glue the eggs on. If you want to glue the eggs directly on the wire, that's perfectly fine as well. I just, it was a little bit easier wrapping around the burlap and then gluing the eggs to the burlap. So that's the first step that I did in creating this wreath is as I just wrapped this burlap all the way around, I started it off by gluing it at the beginning, gluing it at the end. And here you go, it's all wrapped, it's all ready for my eggs to be glued down. But first, I have white eggs. I don't want white eggs, so I'm gonna be painting those. And what I'm gonna be using for this is just acrylic paints. So I've purchased these guys at the Dollar Tree. It's like a beige yellow color and an espresso color. Those are the two colors that I'm gonna do solids. And then these two paints I got at the Dollarama, and this is just black and white. And all I'm gonna do is mix those and make a gray hue. Now, unfortunately, when I was taping, I lost when I was painting the, <laughs> the three colors, so I don't have the footage of that, unfortunately, but I painted a dozen in each color, and as well, what I did was I took that espresso color and I added speckles to the white egg, so little splotches all over. So all I'm gonna do is wet a paintbrush get it really, really wet, and then I'm just gonna flick it. So here I'm just using my index finger to flick it, and then it gets, and it creates all these little speckles all over, and I just dip a little bit in the paint, a lot of water, and it becomes very runny, very wet, and very flickable. <laughs> Oh, geez. And those eggs kept falling off all the time. 
But there you go. Just a little word of warning. You can see by my desktop and my hands, paint does get everywhere. So use a protective surface because the paint will fly everywhere. And those darn eggs kept falling <laughs> all over the place. But I wanted everything to dry. Here is my wreath. Here are uh, a dozen of those beige color eggs that I've painted and dried. And I'm going to start off with this dark espresso color. And all I'm going to do for my eggs is I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue down. I'm going to find a spot. And then I'm just going to glue them right onto that burlap wreath base. And really, that's it. There's no method. There's no layout or plan. I'm just kind of taking each color, adding some hot glue down. And then I'm just going to hold it in place until it dries a little bit and then move on to the next color. And here I have that espresso color, that beige color, and you'll see the gray right there as well, along with that white speckled egg one too. And I'm just alternating between each color, placing it down all over that base. Now that everything's dry for my first layer, I am gonna add a second layer just for a little depth and a little interest. Now, for some of them, I wrapped a little bit of twine around the gray ones, just again, to add a little more interest to it. And I'm going to create a second layer where I'm just gonna place a couple of eggs just right on top there. Now, for me, when I was doing this, I did like to see the burlap in the back with the wreath frame. And if you don't want to see that, you can totally get more eggs and cover everything up so you don't see that uh, burlap in the background. But I kind of liked it. I wanted it to be a little rustic, a little modern, farmhousey, you know, whatever the terminology is now. But I just wanted it to be just a little bit rustic and showing that burlap. So here we go. I have my second layer of eggs down, and I'm just so happy with how it turned out. So I'm just going to let that fully dry and cure with all the glue and move on to making my ribbon or my bow, I should say, out of ribbon. <laughs> all I'm gonna do for this is use two and a half inch. This is plain wired burlap ribbon. I am cutting five pieces at 17 inches in length. Now this is a bundle bow or a bouquet bow or a hand bow, I think some people are calling it. I also did a video, a more in-depth video on making this bow. So if you want to see that, I'll just link that in the top right hand corner and down below. And then you can see a more detailed version of this bow for a tutorial. And what I did was I just dovetailed each end, folded it over, and then I made a little squishy part in the center and held it with my index finger and the finger behind it. And I moved on to my next loop. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating five loops in total and I'm just holding them together with my left hand in between that pointy finger and the finger right beside it just holding it all in place and again it's five pieces at 17 inches I'm going to take my little twist tie twist it all around make sure it's nice and tight and then I'm going to fold open those little tails at the bottom so I can get that on my wreath here is my wreath again, and I found a spot where I didn't do a second layer of Easter eggs. And all I'm going to do is twist that excess pipe cleaner, flip it over, and just wrap that pipe cleaner around to the back. And then I'm just going to twist it in place and make sure it's nice and secure. And of course, with me, I usually like to add a little bit of hot glue just where I twisted it, just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. I don't use a whole bunch, just a little bit on there. Let that dry, and then that'll be nice and secure and that bow will not come off. I'm flipping it over, and now one of my favorite parts, if you've watched my past videos, I love fluffing bows. <laughs> I don't know what it is, I just spend a long time doing it. But there you go, my bow is all fluffed up, my eggs are all on there, nice and secure. And I just love how this turned out with all these colors here. And here it is on my outside door, that 
chocolate brown color, the light beige, the white, the gray with the twine, with the burlap in the background and that plain burlap bow. I just love this and I hope you do as well. This list for today, a 14 inch wire wreath frame, six rolls of deco mesh, scissors, measuring tools, some glue sticks and glue guns, Chanel stems. I have some tubing, an Easter sign, and some Easter decorations that I may or may not use today. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> and let's get started. So I'm going to first start off with my deco mesh rolls and I'm going to cut them. So I have a pair of scissors and a measuring tool. Here I'm just straightening out the start of it. Now I use a cutting mat to do the measuring. You can totally use a ruler. That's totally fine. With my curly deco mesh, I usually do seven inches. So you can measure out and cut at the seven inch mark. And that's going to give you your first little piece of deco mesh. But here's a little idea. I have seven inches right across my cutting mat. So a little tip for you, if you're doing the curly method and you have a lot of cuts to do, you can cut a piece of cardboard that's seven inches or like myself, my cutting mat is seven inches. So all I do is I just roll and roll and roll until the roll is almost done or for you know, 20 times or something like that. And then I just cut off the excess. I keep holding down that uh, deco mesh there so it doesn't fly apart. Grab those scissors and put it in between the deco mesh and the cutting mat or a piece of cardboard, whatever you're using. And then just flip it over to the other side. And once you finish cutting this side here, you have created all these wonderful pieces with just a couple of cuts. How amazing is that? Such a great little tip, eh? <laughs> so here I am. I have made all of my cuts here. I'm just going to get rid of that excess and then I just start separating all of my sheets together. So again, this is seven inches of deco mesh that I have cut up. And of course I have all these wonderful colors, lavender, pink, lime green, yellow, blue. I'm going to cut those all as well. So here's the wreath ring we're going to be using and there's sections. So there's five sections here for each wreath ring. And in, within each section, I'm going to do five bundles. So on an anchor and then five bundles. So basically for the total, you're going to need 144 seven inch pieces of deco mesh. Does that all make sense? <laughs> so to start making my bundles, I cut Chanel stems in half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take four pieces of that seven inch deco mesh. Now, this is how I do my bundles. You can do it any other way. You can have three or four or six in there, as many as you want, but this is how I do mine. And then for the first piece, I'm just gonna roll it up and slide it in between my two piece fingers, and then I'm just gonna hold it in place. And then I'm gonna roll up my second piece and do the exact same thing for the third piece and for the fourth piece as well. And I'm just gonna hold them in my left hand and then I have some fingers to roll it with my right hand. Now my Chanel stem comes in, you're gonna glide it along your fingers. Transfer the Chanel stem to your left hand and the deco mesh to your right and give it a good little twist. And there is the start of our little bundle. How about we do one more together? And again, it's your four pieces of your deco mesh and one Chanel stem. Your first piece, just give it a good roll, slide that between your two fingers, and you work your way to your second, third, and fourth piece. Now, how tight you roll it is completely up to you. Obviously, the tighter the roll, the smaller the curl, the more defined curl and the looser, it gets a little bit messy as well. But here you go, you take that Chanel stem, fold it over, and then give it a good twist. Now you can kind of see how our deco mesh will be formed with those bundles. So I'm gonna finish all of the rest here. So it's 36 bundles of four that I'm creating. And to attach it to our wreath, I have all my bundles here. 
Your wreath is going to go face down and we're going to use the two center wires. But first to create an anchor, we're going to use one of those cross wires. I just pointed that out. So you take your two pieces of Chanel and your crossbar and the two inner wires should be within that those Chanel stems. And then all you do is twist it around and that's how you create your first anchor. And for the second one, you do the same procedure and this time it's not on an anchor wire or crossbar. So you just put it on those two inside wires, give it a little twist and then you can push it down. And again, like I said earlier, I do one bundle at the crossbar and then in between the two crossbars, I do five bundles in total. So that's going to go around the entire wreath. And that's how I do it. Again, you don't have to do the exact same thing. You can experiment and do more or do less, but this is how I do mine. So here I am, I'm coming up to another crossbar. So I do the same thing like we did the first time around. I feed the Chanel stem through the top and the bottom space and I make sure that crossbar and the two inner wires are within that Chanel stem and then I just give it a good twist and we've just created our second anchor for this wreath. There you go. So I've got my anchor and then I've got my five bundles plus my other anchor and now you can kind of see how it's all coming together and how all these bundles are taking over my desktop. <laughs> but I'm going to finish everything and I'm working here on my last couple of bundles that I'm putting in. This is the last one here. And of course my favorite part is always once we turn it over to see the reveal of this wonderful wreath. I can't wait to see. Look at all those colors. I am so happy with how this wreath turned out. But there you go, a nice curly deco mesh wreath. And I'm gonna add some tubing to it. Like I showed you before, I have some Easter eggs, a sign and ribbon. So I'm just gonna experiment and see what I wanna add on here. But I know I wanna use that tubing, so I'm gonna cut that tubing up next. And here it is. I don't know the length it comes in the packaging. Um, and I actually kind of just eyeball the tubing. So what I do is I just start off making little loops here and there, and then I cut it at a certain uh, length once I'm happy with the size of the loops and the tubing. So I don't really uh, measure anything. I just kind of pull it and then I cut it. Now here there's some kinks in the tubing, so that's where I'm gonna cut it, and that's how I'm gonna create another bundle of tubing. So I don't really measure, and I do like them being various sizes, so if you like, you can measure yours out to a couple of inches or more. It's all up to you. I'm one to kind of have it all over the place. So here's my little sign and it has a little hole at the top and I have these little pearls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little glue down and I'm gonna try to anyways, <laughs> it rolled away on me and add that little pearl to the top to cover it off. And then once I took a look at it, I was like, you know, it needs something else. So I just added a couple more pearls just around the flower just to kind of finish that off. So you hide the hole there. Then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to take two big dabs of glue and two long Chanel stems. And I'm just going to glue it down using my little handy dandy tool there. Add more glue on the top let that all dry and that's how we're going to attach that to the frame as you can see i had attached the uh, sign to the frame already uh, i didn't capture that on video i'm so sorry but i did the same thing i just flipped it over attached it to the two center wires with that uh, chanel stem and here you see i'm just sporadically adding that tubing every now and then once i add the sign on because I didn't want to put the tubing on and then put the sign on and then cover up the tubing. I just, I love the look of the tubing, so I didn't want the sign to cover that up. That's the reason why I added the sign first. But here I am, I just putting on the final touches of that tubing. And again, I'm just wrapping it around whichever wires I want and seeing how it goes. So it's kind of an experiment as I go. And I'm loving how this all turned out with the tubing on there. It just adds a certain flair to it. 
So I have these eggs with the glitter, and I also have these matte pastel ones. So I'm kind of deciding which ones I'm going to go for. And I decide just to go with the matte color ones. And these are actually chalkboard eggs that I found at the dollar store. You can actually write with chalk on them. I thought they were a really cool idea. But most importantly, I mean, I just I love the colors of these, and I love how they're that matte color. So again, I'm just kind of sporadically gluing them down, making sure the two colors aren't side by side. But at the same time, I'm not overly obsessed with where they're gonna go. I just kind of randomly place them down and finish that all off with the last couple of eggs. And our wreath is almost done. <laughs> I wish it was this fast in real life. <laughs> oh my gosh. So there you go. There is our curly deco mesh wreath all colorful and ready for Easter with my little sign, my little mesh tubing, and those amazing matte color eggs. I just love how this turned out, and I hope you did as well. If you liked today's video, why not give me a thumbs up and maybe a comment down below. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make my carrots. And the base of the carrots is actually just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. I'm gonna roll this up into a cone shape. And once I get that all going, I just tape it together to hold that uh, loose end down. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and chop off to approximately where I want the length of my carrot. After that, I grab a scrap piece of paper and I just scrunch it up and roll it up into a ball. That's actually gonna be the top portion. So I wanted it to be a little bit rounded at the top. So I'm taking some glue from my glue gun and putting it in there, letting it dry. And once it's all dry, I'm gonna grab some masking tape and I'm just gonna tape the top portion down. The reason why I did this was because of my trial runs, I couldn't get the twine wrapped around the ball at the top. And then when I tried it with masking tape, it totally worked. So this little step just added a little bit more um, ease in getting that twine on there. And speaking of the twine, here we go. I'm just going to start at the bottom with a little dab of glue just to get that all settled. And then I'm just going to put that starter piece down, get it all dried and secured in there so it doesn't move. And then I just start twisting that twine all the way around. Nothing very complicated about this. <laughs> Every now and then I do stop and I do throw a little bit of glue down just to make sure it stays in place. Uh, one of the trial runs I didn't add any glue to it and at one point I let go and the whole thing <laughs> unraveled so it was quite the mess. <laughs> so here you can see uh, as I get to the top I do have to put glue um, on every single row just simply because it comes up to that cone shape right at the top and then when I'm done I just throw a whole bunch of glue right at the top to secure everything down and I notice there's a couple of areas that I can still see the white and I'm just gonna go through those areas with some glue and some more twine and of course after I finish everything you can cut off little pieces of twine to cover any other white spots. So once that is all dry and ready to go to our next step, which is finishing off our carrot. And what I did with this was I have a little moss and at the other end, I have a little spear. So it's just a skewer. So here's the moss that I got. It's preserved moss. It came in two different colors and really simple. All I did was I just took a clump that was already clumped together threw some glue down, grabbed that moss, stuck it on top. And as I was looking at it, I was like, yeah, it needs a little bit more. So I just added more. And really you can too, just add as much as you want until it looks good. And like I was talking about previously, I have the wood skewers that I put in the bottom of the carrot. You'll see it right here. And that's just to attach it into the centerpiece. So we all have this wonderful tin from the Dollar Tree. We all love it. We all have it. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm not going to prime it or paint it. I'm going to fill it with some paper that I have here. Um, I didn't have any of that floral foam. So if you have that, 
that would work great as well. But I just found this was paper that I had uh, received in an Amazon box from an Amazon shipment, and it was sturdy, and I thought, you know what, I could use this for this. So I decided to use what I had instead of throwing it out or recycling it. So here I'm recycling it for my Easter decor. <laughs> so I'm just filling up the moss all the way at the top there, put in as much or as little as you want. Of course, if you've never worked with moss before, you can see it is very dirty. So protect your surfaces. And here's where my skewer comes in. I'm just placing that in there, giving it a good push down, and I'm just noticing it's falling over. So I have to come in and really push that guy down to make sure it's all secured. And of course, I did five of the carrots in total. So what I'm doing now is I am just organizing everything, placing it, seeing how it looks, giving it a once over. And then once I'm all done, I'll show you the finished product. Here it is. How cute and easy is this, eh? <laughs> you could use this as a centerpiece, and here's the final piece. All I have here is a frame that I've painted already and primed. I painted it black, and then I just got a couple of templates that I printed out of a bunny in silhouette. I didn't really know what size I wanted to do, so I scaled it up a couple of times just to give it a trial run. You saw me put the frame over it and kind of decide what size I want. And then obviously on the right there, you see my roll of burlap. I have the paint from painting the frame. And that frame is just a five by seven frame. I got either from the Dollar Tree or the Dollarama. I mean, really, if you're painting it, it doesn't matter you know, what it looks like. You're painting it anyways. <laughs> the overall design was pretty simple and I was happy with that. So once I get it all cut out, I just make sure all my edges are nice and crisp. I'm just taking a little piece off here. And then I have my template all ready to go. And I'm going to grab that burlap and the back of the frame. And once I rolled it out, I noticed there was a little hole there, so I couldn't cut it right at the beginning. And what I would suggest, because I made a little mistake here, what I would suggest is using a pen or a pencil to mark out your cuts <laughs> you'll see at the end of this it's it's a little bit too short but i did fix it towards the end anyways i cut out my little piece of burlap i put it uh, facing upwards and then throwing down my little template i'm not gluing it down i want it to be a little bit rustic looking if there's a mistake i'm totally cool with that and i'm not looking for full coverage either so i'm just taking my stamping tool there my stamping sponge holding that template down, and I'm just going to stamp, 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 stamp until I'm happy with the outcome. A little bit more here, a little bit less there, and there he is. How cute is that? So I'm taking my back of the frame, and I'm just throwing a little bit of glue down at the top there. I'm going to place the burlap down, and here's where I realize I made a huge error. <laughs> you can see it doesn't fill um, the full backing. And of course, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, once I put it in the frame, it'll work, but you'll see it doesn't work. Oh, well, trial and error, we all have them, right? <laughs> we all learn from our mistakes. So here I'm just throwing it back in the frame, and you'll see right up there at the bottom, I don't have the full coverage that I wanted, and I'm coming back and cleaning it up. But I just put a piece right at the bottom, and here's the final product. I'm not sure if I can call this a DIY, but I wanted to share it with you anyways. I saw these little bunnies, um, and all I'm really going to do is I'm going to transform them in from this golden color. One was like a golden yellow with glitter on it. Another one was pink, I believe it was. So I grabbed two of them, and I just loved how they looked. They were simple. They didn't have any eyes or whiskers or anything. They were just simple bunnies, and I thought these would look great painted black. So I don't know if I can call it a DIY because really it's just kind of a transformation as opposed to a do-it-yourself project. It's really quick. It's really simple. But I wanted to include it anyways. Here's the other bunny. So I have one kind of sitting on his hind legs and one kind of on all fours, I guess you would say. And I just wanted to show you that I did have to put like two or three coats on this. Um, I think I would have primed them 
before I did the final coats because it was two or three coats. It did take a while. But you know what? The outcome of them was amazing and I was very happy and I got really dirty, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> and here they are with the buffalo plaid tray that's actually coming up next. But how cute are those little bunnies? I found these uh, artistic panels at the Dollarama. They're made out of wood. They have a frame. And I thought, oh my God, this is going to be amazing as a painting. And that was originally how I was going to roll with this. But then it turned into a completely different thing. And I decided to do the buffalo plaid instead. So the first step that I'm doing is I am just going to paint the outside of the frame in that black color because that was kind of the theme that I wanted to go with was carry that black throughout the whole um, Easter decor this year for uh, for the house. So here I am. I'm just painting everything black. I'm going to grab my paintbrush in a little bit right here and I'm just going to grab the paint and use it on the inside as well. So the only thing I really didn't paint on that outside frame was the back part because nobody's ever really going to see it. If you're one that loves to finish the entire um, project, then paint the back by all means. <laughs> I, I was totally fine without it being painted. And here I am going to start with my buffalo plaid. So I want to do my first coat, pure white. I'm using the stamping tool and I'm also going to use my paintbrush to do around the edges. I just have white acrylic paint that I got at the dollar store. I think this one was the Dollar Tree. Yep, this one was the Dollar Tree. I also have paints that I use from the Dollarama as well. And the paintbrush and the stiplers, they also come from the dollar stores as well. So basically everything I'm using today, including my tools, is from the dollar stores. <laughs> now let's start making our plaid. So I have the painter's tape, paintbrush, I have my palette and my paints. The center part is all dry from the white and the black is all dry. And now I'm just going to take off pieces of tape that are a little bit longer than the area I want to cover. So I'm just going to start at the top with my first piece. I'm going to lay that down securely. And then I'm going to cut another piece. Now this one is going to be used as a spacer. So this one you don't have to press down. I'm just pressing it down right at the very ends because I'm going to use this as a spacer. So instead of you grabbing your ruler and pencil, trying to line everything up and measuring, I'm just going to use that one piece of tape as a spacer. Once I have that second piece down, I take the spacer off and use it again as another spacer, just right below that second piece of tape. Now I'm just going to put my third piece of tape on there, and then I just continue that whole process until I'm finished right at the end. And then I'm going to mash all that tape down to make sure my edges don't bleed. I'm going to take my white and a little, little bit of black paint. And I'm going to start mixing. And I'm just aiming for a gray color. Not too light, not too dark. Kind of like the three bears, right? Goldilocks and the three bears. <laughs> Something that's just right. <laughs> so I'm just filling in all that white with that gray and I'm using a flat brush for this to get those nice smooth edges and then I'm going to take the tape off and we're going to let this completely dry before we do our next step. Here's our next step. Our paint is dry. I'm going to grab that masking tape again. This time we are going to go in the opposite direction at a 90 degree angle to our first um, stripes. So it is the same process for putting the tape down. I'm going to lay my first piece, going to take a look at it, see if that's where I want it. And then my second piece is going to be my spacer piece. And I continue that process all the way down. The exact same thing that we did, the exact same method that we did the first time around, just taking that spacer piece of tape and using it over and over again. So we get nice, even stripes all the way through. And once I'm done, I push everything down, make sure my edges are nice and secured. And then grab that white and a little bit of black paint, mix it, and get the color that I want. You don't have to be exact with your color choices between the first gray and the second gray. 
if you want, you make a big batch of it and then just wrap it up when you're drying the paint. For me, I wanted a little bit of a difference of color. I didn't want a huge difference, but just a little bit. So that's why I mix two batches of paints. But if you want, mix a big batch of paints, have like a little water in a spritzer bottle. And when you paint again, just spritz a little water on there just to liven up the paint again. So now leave the tape on for this process, let everything dry, and then we're going to come back and put tape over. You see the dark lines there? I was just pointing them out. That's where we're going to put our tape on. So I'm just going to do, I had a little, little piece right at the top. So I'm going to do that first. And then you'll see me put the tape over those dark edges there. There we go. And I'm going to push down, make sure they're all nice and secured. So no bleeding. And then all I'm going to do is continue with that black paint and paint over the top. Now ignore the star, the black star, the black flower at the top. <laughs> that was something else I was trying that didn't work out. <laughs> like I said, trial and error, right? <laughs> but here I am. I'm just painting my black. And soon you'll see the whole reveal. This is my favorite part, actually, is when I do stuff with tape. I love taking the tape off and revealing the final product. And you just saw me before there kind of um, finishing, putting the finishing touches on the outside frame with my black because I did get some white paint on it and scratched it up a little bit from moving it around so much. So here I am. I'm just taking all my tape off. And now we're starting to see the buffalo plaid come through. And this is where I'm getting really excited. I'm like, oh my God, it looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but I was really happy with the result of this. And again, there's my hands all nice and messy. So here it is again with my little bunnies, the buffalo plaid tray. And all I did was I found a another frame. This one was a little bit bigger than a 5x7. I think it fits a 5x7, but it was with a mat, so it is a little bit bigger. And I didn't like the, the brass. I loved the black. I didn't like the brass. <laughs> so I just came in with acrylic paints like I have with uh, all the other projects that I did. I painted the frame, let it dry. And these little Easter eggs, they were a bright blue color. And I stuck them on toothpicks and then primed them. And now what I'm going to come in and do is mix brown and white to create like a beige color. And then all I'm doing is I'm taking my paintbrush and I am painting those. I'm going to stick it on this sandpaper block to let them dry. So it's a little bit easier. My fingers are huge. So <laughs> my first couple of tests, I couldn't figure out how to paint them and not have my fingerprints all over it. So I grabbed some sticks, started painting. We're going to let that dry. And this is the back of the frame that we just painted. And these are some pages ripped out of a novel that I'm recycling right now and using some projects on. And I'm just tearing out strips of paper, placing it all down. And then I'm gonna take my glue gun and glue it all down. I have done previous projects with this novel and you'll see it a couple of times in this video as well. I'm still working through the same novel. If you watch my videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. And then I just trim everything off and I'm all set with my background. Of course, you can take um, tea bags that are watered down and put a little aging to it if you want. I just actually wanted to leave it the way it is. Now, my plan for this was to make a nest for the eggs. I didn't really know how it was going to work. I just kind of cut a rectangle out of uh, cardstock and I made a really bad half circle cut it down the middle, grab some glue, and then I just made like a little cone, a very wide cone, let's put it that way. That's kind of where I wanted to start with this to see if it would work. So in my head, it works. <laughs> but sometimes the practicality, when you bring it forth, it doesn't work. But I'm happy to say this was one of those projects that totally worked, and I was so, so happy. <laughs> So here I am, I'm just testing everything out. I'm thinking, does it work? Is it going to work? Should I just go forward with it? So there's about a thousand things running through my head and then I decide, you know what? Let's just roll with it. Don't think about it too much. 
just go with the idea and hopefully it'll work out. So I decide to cut off the extra pieces. I'm gonna grab that glue gun and I'm gonna glue that little open-faced cone onto my backdrop, which is that old recycled novel. Here we go. I'm testing it all out. And of course, right now I'm a little bit nervous, <laughs> thinking, oh my God, is this gonna work? Is this gonna work? <laughs> But I do grab that moss eventually. I just decide, let's go for it, Dave. Just stop thinking about it. And I'm going to take some of that hot glue and I'm going to put it on the outside and the inside because I want it wrapped around. So I don't want any of that white cardstock to show. So I just start adding that moss in there and pushing it down, clumping it all together, and repeating the same method over and over again. Glue down grab some moss, squish it into place, and it came out so well. I was so happy with it. And of course, working with moss, you get dirty, your work area gets dirty, everything gets dirty. But the look of it is phenomenal. I love the look of moss. It's so natural. It's just, it's beautiful. Let's face it, right? That's why we all work with it. <laughs> So now you can't see, but right now there was a huge smile on my face when I was planning this all out. So these were the eggs that we just previously primed and painted, sorry, that uh, beige color. And I'm just testing it out to see how it's going to look and if they all fit and they do. So my frame is dry. My back portion is all dry. And I'm just attaching it into the frame right now. And then I'm gonna grab those eggs that I painted previously because they are all dry. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on them and place them in my newly created nest. I have to admit, this is probably, it's actually tied for first place. There's two projects here that are tied for first place and this is the one. I was totally smiling at this point from ear to ear. I was like, oh my God, this is working, this is working. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed it too, as much as I did, because I just love how it looked. Here's our final product. I just have a terracotta pot here. I'm going to start priming it with just white paint. And here's another project that in my head started out to be this crisp white pot. Halfway through the priming process, um, you'll just see me kind of stop, grab some black paint, mix it together and make some gray paint, really. Jeez, why was that so hard for me to say? <laughs> I couldn't get it out of my mouth. <laughs> so here's when I decide, you know what, the white's not really working for me. I think I'm gonna do a, a gray color for this. So I start mixing up some gray paint and then I just start painting. Now this is just acrylic paint. Um, I noticed with this acrylic paint on the terracotta pot, it just sucked that paint up so fast. I mean, I know this video is sped up right now, but I was painting it so fast because by the time I went to the second row, the first row was dry. So I wanted to make sure everything was blended, even though the look that I was going for wasn't a pure gray. It was kind of a, a blacky, whitey gray, you know, um, not an unblended color, let's put it that way. But it still dried so, so quickly. So if you're going to do this, just note that, that the acrylic paint does dry very quickly. Now, I found these little glitter carrots as well. Uh, if you watch my haul, you'll see them in there. And they were a little bit too shiny for me. So I wanted to dirty them up. But I didn't want to have full coverage again with this. I still wanted a little bit of that green and yellow to show through. So here I am. I'm just stamping on a little bit of brown paint. I'm getting a little bit dirty here but not full coverage, and I'm grabbing my dirty fingers and dirtying up the stems. <laughs> and after that, I'm going to put some white on there as well and just blend that in all together to make that carrot a little bit dirty, like, you know, it's been growing in the ground. <laughs> Here's the final product. I think it looks awesome. I was so happy with this as well. And my pot's dry, and I had these plastic uh, stencils and I wanted to write the words bunny bait on there. And I was thinking about using my acrylic pens for it. And then I decided, you know what, let's just try this stencil out. Um, I don't use stencils all that often. I have used a couple of stencils in my abstract paintings 
a little tidbit about me. I'm a hobby artist. I don't do it for a living, but I do do abstract paintings as a hobby. And I have used stencils in that in my, in my paintings before. So never really in a project like this. So I was a little nervous going into it. But again, I just told myself, you know what, Dave, just do it. <laughs> and I'm so glad I did because I was happy with the results. It wasn't 100% perfect, but I never look for 100% perfection in what I do in my crafts or my art. I think a little flaw here and there is number one, a learning experience, and number two, it adds interest. And you have a story to tell when you show it off, right? <laughs> you can be like, oh my God, look what I did wrong here. <laughs> so there you go, our bunny bait letters. I'm going to let that dry. And here we are, it's all dry. And I have all of my carrots painted and dry as well. I'm just going to mess up the top portion a bit. And here's that infamous book that I have been using lately. So I'm grabbing more pages and I'm just going to fill the bottom. Again, you can fill it whatever you want, newspaper, magazines, an old novel, or the foam. You can stick skewers in the bottom of these carrots. But I just found the paper held it in fine. You'll see me, I'm scrunching it up and then I'm actually pushing the carrots, or, or pushing the paper, sorry, around the carrots to keep them in place. And again, I'm going to grab that handy dandy moss that we all love and enjoy and that I've pretty much used throughout this uh, DIY. And I just love it. It looks so good. And the two colors, I was so happy to find the two colors. It was amazing. So there we go. We are almost done. I'm putting the finishing touches here of the moss. And there is our bunny bait. What a cute project, eh? So I had this little tin and I didn't want it, like the first tin that I showed you, I didn't want to just leave it. So this time around, I decided to prime it with white acrylic paints. And once that is all dry, I'm going to come back and I'm going to stamp it with the black acrylic paint as well. Again, all these tools, they are all either from the Dollar Tree or the Dollarama. So they're all very inexpensive. I mean, each one up here in Canada, the Dollar Tree is actually a dollar twenty-five per item, and I believe a dollar twenty-five is the same in Dollarama as well. So my first egg that I want to do is paper mache egg. So I have a mold here, so it's an egg that I purchased and I primed, and I'm just mixing glue and a tad bit of water, and more of that novel all ripped up. And we all know how to paper mache. We just keep applying, applying, and applying that paper mixed in with the glue and the water. And of course, we all know how messy it is, but isn't it fun? Come on. <laughs> it's like being a kid again, getting your hands all dirty. <laughs> so my second egg, I wanted to do a twine egg. So um, out of the same package that I got the first egg that I just showed you, I primed it as well. And here I'm just starting my coil for that egg. And I'm gluing every now and then as well, just to make sure that coil of the twine doesn't come through. Now, this twine was a little bit thicker than the one I used on the carrots. And actually, I was really happy with it. Uh, this was a, a brand new roll, and I was really, really happy with it. So here I am. I'm just finishing it off. And again, once I finish it off, I do notice a couple of white spaces here and there. And all I do is I take little pieces of the twine, chop it up and then use my glue gun to put it and cover those white areas. Really simple, not noticeable at all. And then I just cut the end of it. And here is my pot that's all dry and it has little embellishments on it and I wanted to bring that out. So I just take that block of sandpaper and I just vigorously sand away at the whole thing. I do circle motions where, where the flowers are, straight motions everywhere else just kind of aging it up with that whole, you know, used like that we all love, right? That whole rustic, it's been used for the last 20 years. The enamel wear, that's what I was actually looking for. We all love that enamel wear. So with that uh, paper mache egg, all I did was wrap twine around it and put a couple of paper roses on it. I just purchased those little paper roses at uh, the dollar store. Again, my novel comes in handy. Recycling all this paper, I love it instead of having to throw it away. I'm going to fill it up. I'm going to grab that moss, and I'm just going to add those finishing touches here. 
So I have two of my twine eggs and that paper mache egg. And I'm kind of looking at going, oh, it looks too full. So I'm playing around with it. And then the universe tells me, nope, it's too full. So the eggs keep falling off. So I'm like, I'm going to go with two in here for now. <laughs> but it ends up looking great. I'm very happy with it. And what does it look like? Here you go. The final result. Now let's put all seven projects together. We have our bunny bait. We have our painted bunnies, our buffalo plaid tray, that carrot centerpiece, those nest eggs in the frame, and our burlap bunnies in the frame. I'm just loving, loving this project, and I hope you did too. If you did, hit that like button and maybe leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I upload a new video every Thursday at 5 o'clock.